and welcome, welcome, welcome to Wimbledon Coffee Morning, brought to you by Lavazza. I'm Anne-Marie Batson. And I'm Danny Jameson. On the morning of day three of the championships, another packed day of tennis for the crowds to enjoy. for the day because there was so much happening yesterday wasn't there it was incredibly incredibly busy how do you um, how do you spend your afternoon i spent the afternoon amongst the crowds yesterday we wanted Lovely. to get a feel about what makes wimbledon special to people outside of tennis so we had a few chats with one or two which i will show you later i imagine that took quite a while there's, a, there's so many people seem to have so many different reasons why they love this place so much oh absolutely and the one thing that came through is the smiles on their faces yeah. absolutely over the moon to be watching some quality tennis here it's not a bad way to spend a day really not is it in all. the sun watching a bit of tennis lovely sun stuff sun was shining it was fantastic and quite a few pims being drunk as yeah. <laughs> by the time we got around in the afternoon oh, That's I can imagine <laughs> um, well, I was incredibly busy yesterday mm -hmm. I uh, had my first strawberries and cream which was glorious. One punnet or two punnets? Only one. Oh, only one. I've got to watch my well, figure. you're a tall lad, you know, you got it. Yeah, I'm a growing boy, but no. <laughs> I'm, uh, I thought one was enough just for the just to, to, to tee us off for the, for the week. I think I've done quite well to get to day three and only have one set of strawberries and cream Very as well. Very good. I haven't um, had any yet. But, but I did have, manage to watch some tennis. Mm -hmm. Saw the three really big names. I was right side of the court when Roger Federer came out, Rafael Nadal uh, and Serena Williams as well. That was pretty cool. And um, then I managed to actually see almost all of the Brits who were in action yesterday as well so Dan Evans looking very good which was which He's was nice to sharp, see and I have to give a shout out to Derby's own Jay Clark he won his first round match do you know who he plays in round two he plays a certain Roger Federer oh, in round that. two which I know Jay, Jay himself and Jay's family particularly Yasmin his sister will be <laughs> absolutely over the moon yeah about. Well, well done Jay and uh, yeah looking forward to seeing him take on Roger in round two. Well Absolutely. done to the Brits. Did you happen to catch the TFO Fanini match by oh. the way on court 18? <laughs> yes, that was right behind us. And yeah, we said yesterday the word box office. It absolutely lived up to expectations. It was great. And Fabio Fanini, by the way, is just so entertaining. He, he was throwing tennis balls all over the show. He was shouting around in Italian and just so much flair and flamboyance. It was, it was great to watch. Yeah, really, really cool. And absolutely, you know, that was a packed day, but also we've got the doubles starting today for the ladies and the men's. Indeed, yeah, because this is the, the first day of round two, we've basically lost half of the field from the ladies and the gentlemen's singles. So to make up the numbers, there's some doubles. If you've never watched doubles tennis before, give it a go because it's really, really exciting. Highly it's it's great, especially when, uh, when you get some really fast rallies, when all four uh, players on court get right up to the net and there's some... Uh, volley rallies going on it's really really exciting um, I had never watched it up until a couple of years ago mm -hmm. and then caught some of it and it was awesome in the flesh as well if you're coming down make sure you try and catch one of the, the games on the courts today absolutely but you know what it's not just about us enjoying the tennis here we want you guys to get involved in the conversation as mm. well get involved and in social using the hashtag Wimbledon using the hashtag join the story send pictures whatever you want text messages or well, not text messages <laughs> but send us social media postings make sure that you also join the Facebook group and Wimbledon as well join the story we want to hear from you because we want to share your stories yeah there's some absolute crackers as well so no matter what your story is maybe you've never been down before maybe you're watching for the first time Whatever it is, share it with us, and uh, yeah, we'll try and get as many on the on the show as we can. We've got some great ones coming yeah. up a little bit later on. Now, yeah. excitingly, we've also we've got a poll live today uh, across all of our socials. So do get voting. We want to know, right? You're inside the gates. Where is the first place you go? What are you hitting up first? Do you go and grab the strawberries like I did yesterday? Mm -hmm. Do you go straight up to the hill, and get your spot for the day's tennis? Do you head to the shop, get a bit of merchandise, or do you head straight for that pim stand, which is just Liquid over there on the hill? So get voting, and we'll have the results of that poll before the end of the show. Now, yesterday was so busy, we don't want you to miss anything. It's very easy to let some, some things slip through the cracks. So here are some things you may have missed from day two. We have royalty watching Catherine Duchess of Cambridge joining us. Oh, you just got to laugh sometimes. Never mind the Wombles, the Teletubbies are in town. 
Which one of those is Dipsy, John? I have no idea. Oh, come on. <laughs> you have to be a bit tipsy to wear the outfit. Has to work on the dive a little bit more. <laughs> I'm a physical, I'm a physical specimen, so don't worry about it. James will be looking for a couple of haymakers here to get over the finish line. Absolutely. <laughs> oh! <laughs> she got a bit tangled there, didn't she, Sloan? Well behaved, Wakefield High, Wimbledon colours. Maybe they're all playing truant. Listen to the reception this man is getting now. No, oh, what oh, oh, oh. oh Mohammed, what are you doing? <laughs> this match is so bad that even he's fallen asleep. <laughs> Everyone's captivated. <laughs> A chip-eating day, can we call it? Crisps. But, uh, we call it crisps. I know, I know. That's a difficult word for me, though, so we'll just call it a chip. As if there wasn't enough quality tennis going on yesterday, there was a special visitor who popped down to SW19. Her Royal Highness, the Duchess of Cambridge, which, of course, generated a whole load of social media traffic. Indeed, she loves the tennis. Uh, she, she plays, I believe, she as well. She does play, yeah. Um, and yeah, she w didn't just go straight to the Royal Box, which I thought was great. She headed down to the spotted by the practice courts, watching Joe Conta uh, warm down over uh, Arangi, which was spotted by one of the BBC reporters down here. I really like that, but no pressure, though, on no Joe. I wouldn't have thought with the royal, royal eyes boring a hole in, uh, in watching you serve. <laughs> Well, uh, the Duchess Cambridge has got a really good relationship with the, the Fed Cup team anyway, and Joe Conta's is well used to this by now, so it'll all be fine. But what I particularly loved is that Her Royal Highness made her way over to Court 14 to see Harriet Dart play her match, which was lovely. Indeed, yeah. And as well, after her first ever Wimbledon, she uh, sent a little message out to her watching fans, including the Duchess, yes. and even got a little message back from, uh, from Kensington Palace offering congratulations uh, on reaching the second round for the first time, as you say. Hopefully the first of many. Yeah, seven bit Brits through, by the way, to the second round. So yeah, we do love that we do shout. love that in uh, <laughs> over here in the Brits. Uh, yeah, moving on. Um, well, that was probably the big story of the early part of yesterday. The big story of the late part of yesterday. We mentioned the doubles. Oh my goodness! We thought we might get this news yesterday, and we did <laughs> late on. The mixed doubles draw is today, so we needed to get the pairings in. Mm -hmm. Andy Murray we thought was going to, uh, to enter, but we didn't know who his partner was. There were rumours, there was speculation, they were both asked about it, and it's now confirmed Andy Murray is going to be playing in the mixed doubles with none other than Serena Williams. Oh, that's it, we've won, you know, they've won it already. Indeed, well, <laughs> maybe. It, it's difficult to see a pairing with as much silverware in the trophy cabinet as these two. The Facebook post that was put up announcing this, uh, we checked just before the show, just the 22,000 likes um, between the two of them. Amazing. Incredibly popular, pretty much across the board that announcement even with the uh, British Olympic team because both of these two of course have won the Olympic gold medal they have indeed they have indeed and what I really loved yesterday was all the people on social media talking about what hashtag they should use <laughs> oh okay I'm what's sure winning well at the moment it's Mazarina but I, I'm not really Mazarina. feeling that okay. to be honest okay. I'm sure someone will come up something creative let's see what we can do we'll, yes. we'll get our heads together if you have any hashtag join the story let hashtag Wimbledon let us know what the hashtag should be for that mixed doubles pairing um, lots of fans really really excited love this one from Emma um, retweeting the announcement oh I'm too excited my two favourite pro players playing mixed doubles together at my favourite slam tennis dreams really do come true all in caps I think Emma's excited I think she's <laughs> delighted over the moon um, perhaps less excited though mm -hmm. poor old Andy Murray's gran because uh, Judy Murray, who again, we're going to mention, is well worth a follow on social media. She's awesome, really entertaining. Um, she took to Twitter to say Andy's crown is devastated that she isn't going to be partnering Andy <laughs> in the dub. I suppose Serena's not a bad replacement. No, no, you know, but, but plan B and all that. Yeah, I wouldn't like to be Andy when he goes around for tea <laughs> next time at Grand's house. That's going to take some explaining away. Absolutely, absolutely. But in other news as well, going around on social media, it was about the roof closed mm. on the number one court, the new roof that went up earlier this year, and it was Alison Risk and Donna Vekic on court. Indeed, close for the very, very first time. Rather, rather good honour, I yes. think. Um, yeah, and well, hopefully, let's say that is 
the first of very few times we need to we need to use it. Hopefully, the weather holds. It's been great so far. Uh, in other news, I've got to bring it up, haven't I? Go on. Go on. So, Joe Wilfred's song is through to round two in pretty in rapid fire time, less than an hour uh, to beat Bernard Tommy. It's, it's the um, the quickest match at the championship since 2004. Wonder why? Which our Twitter account, great uh, great statting from the uh, the Wimbledon guys on Twitter and uh, I'm just delighted we get to talk about him again on the show in a couple of days time I'm, uh, I'm, re- I'm really excited for that more than anything I saw Joe Wilfred Tonga yesterday and then the minute I saw Danny I was like oh I just saw Joe Wilfred. I just saw your mate and you were so excited about it yeah so and um, look we get to talk about it again uh, elsewhere the Barty party continues it does continue indeed. we're talking about just for that rhyme 13 wins in a row it's extraordinary um, lots of happy Aussies around yesterday, um, around the grounds. Uh, and there's one person we have to say hello to as well. Yes, we do. Uh, Gronya, mm-hmm. who uh, was uh, here yesterday. Um, so she was heading out of Wimbledon last night, thinking about coming down today. She did say that every time Wimbledon's on, it inspires her to get, pick a racket up and really improves the game. Now, it inspires me to pick my racket up, but it does nothing for my game. I'm still rubbish. I, I'm not even going to try. <laughs> <laughs> Um, when you tell me the day a friend of yours was serving against to <laughs> see what a serve was like and it just, the ball just literally flew right yeah, you. Yeah, a friend of mine played to a decent standard uh, as a kid and I was like, just serve at me and see what happens, see if I can get anywhere near it. I, the, the next thing I knew, the ball's 10 feet past <laughs> me. I, I hadn't even moved. It was extraordinary. Oh, <laughs> that was brilliant. So a packed day one, a packed day two and now day three. So here are five things that are happening today. Oh, welcome back to Nick McCarvel, fresh from knocking our... Uh, I, I'm really off. surprised I was asked back. Uh, if we remember yesterday, the great chalkboard yeah. fall of day two. We survived it, the chalkboard survived it. I, I wasn't sure I was going to get the invite back. I was more concerned about the chalkboard than, than any, any <laughs> of us Fair enough. Three. Uh, listen, we've got a poll running. Make sure you are voting. What is, Nick, the very first thing when you get inside them gates? Where are you heading? The hill, the shop, Pims? Where are you heading? Strawberries? Yeah. Well, I told you guys on day one, it's court 12. And again today, Absolutely. Victoria Azarenka <laughs> first up on court 12. It's one of my picks today, uh, Azarenka against Tamjanovic. I love that court. Well, usually for us, we're, we're going to work. Yeah. But um, if I was a Can't fan, really head to the PIMS fan coming we? for the day, I usually wait for a PIMS. You have to, it has to be 12.01 yeah. Yeah. for a PIMS, right, in the afternoon. But yeah, go to the hill. It's 12 the hill. o'clock it's somewhere. It's amazing. It's 12 yeah, o'clock exactly. Thanks, Danny. Right, let's get straight into the, uh, the women's side of the draw because it's another big day. Uh, your pick of the day. Yeah, okay. Oh, Chalkboard, it's your this moment. Is an exciting one. I mean, Corey Goff has been the huge story of the championships, obviously, here for us. In America, I have to tell you, it's exploding. Really? I mean, main news outlets are talking about it. ESPN, obviously, has featured her and her family. Um, you know, ABC News was covering it this morning. It's been huge, huge news for someone 15, like Coco, to beat Venus. I think that was the real big tie-in, right? She qualifies, she comes through, she wins a match, but then it's against the legendary Venus Williams. This is a tough one today against Rybarakova, who actually beat Sabalenka in the first round who is a top 10 player in her own right yeah, she's and a player for sure. yeah and Rybarakova plays a tricky mm-hmm. game she plays with a lot of slice a lot of variety and actually you guys she made the semifinals here a couple years ago so you always talk about that big win right for Coco mm-hmm. Goff she gets that big win over Venus now how do you follow it up she seems super relaxed her family seems to helping help her take it all in stride but that's going to be a tough challenge for her today yeah. is, it, is it quite difficult to follow that up with is it almost the mental 
you're almost spent from that emotion mm. of beating your idol. It's very difficult to get yourself back up to that level for round two. Yeah, and in tennis we say you've never broken serve until you've consolidated. So mm. you've never actually broken until you hold your own. And I actually think that when you have a big upset. You've never really scored that upset until you follow it up. And of course, Coco will take all the experience she got for the number one court. They're on the number two court today, which I think is a great ask for them, the last match up. But I think for Coco, it's all just experience. And that's what she's saying. That's what her family is saying. But you're right, it's going to be a really tough one against uh, Magda. Absolutely. By the way, the gates have now opened. People are now starting to come through. The sun is shining. It's going to be an amazing So day. I can go get my pims and Absolutely. head to the hill? Yeah, yeah. Is that, yeah, yeah. Also, we didn't mention we're twinning here. Yeah. And Anne-Marie, uh, uh, she ignored our WhatsApp. I about did ignore the, the WhatsApp, yes. <laughs> it's a stylish, actually, it's a stylish That was probably a smart choice because you look yeah. better than both of us. <laughs> Thank you. Thank oh, you no, very you're much. rocking, Nick. I think you wear it better than I do. All anyway. right, that's right. <laughs> um, so uh, elsewhere today, uh, let's walk on centre. First, uh, Monica Puig. Uh, the Olympic gold medalist yeah. uh, from, from Rio. This could be a rather entertaining one. Yeah, I was actually surprised, Danny. You're right. And Monica Puig hits a big ball. We talked about it day one, hit the cover off the ball. But she's actually 0-4 against Pliskova. And Pliskova's looked really good. I saw her yesterday training with her coach, the former Wimbledon champion, Conchita Martinez. They seem really relaxed, you guys. She's won six matches in a row. She hasn't dropped a set. But uh, Pika Power, that's what Monica Puig usually goes by on Twitter. Hashtag Pika Power power she can really bring some uh, hard-hitting tennis if she's got a good start in her I think she could certainly threaten Pliskova today but I, I really do think Pliskova's on form and should win that match and represent we should say Mona McQueen she represents Puerto Rico she, she's the only tennis player from that country I yeah think. yeah yeah and she was the first Olympic gold medalist from Puerto Rico they had parades in the street right, in yeah, San Juan after she won and she's been a great representative obviously the hurricanes there she's been a, a huge uh, representative of that country and giving back to her people speaking of representation let's focus on one for it I saw you chatting to her yesterday <laughs> One Heather Watson yes. playing Annette Contevate. What's your thoughts around that match? Well, I think Heather, who won on court 12 mm -hmm. in her first round, she actually got bumped up to the number one court, their first up against Annette Contevate, who actually has British connections herself. She's coached by Nigel Sears, who, of course, is Andy Murray's uh, father-in-law, mm -hmm. Kim, Kim Sears' dad, and he's been a coach for a long time. Heather knows Annette really well. They've played a few times before, Anne-Marie. I think Heather's just going to go for it today because she actually hadn't won a match on the main tour since September. And so that was a big win for her. She had won some lower level uh, matches. She had won a lower level event in Asia a few weeks ago. And she, she said, Nick, for me, there's no shame in going to that lower level, getting some of those match wins. I think now she's got a little bit of confidence and she's going to need the British backing. We remember here a few years ago, she almost beat Serena Williams on center court. She's going to need that support today. Uh, some plenty more American interest throughout the draw. Madison Keys also in, in action today. I'm quite looking forward to watching her today. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Madison Keys. I, I mean, she's someone that in the States we've talked about for a long time now. She's into her early 20s. Um, she hits a big ball. She's got plenty of confidence. It's just for her sometimes she doesn't necessarily have the plan B when she needs it. And so today for her, when she go, goes out on court against Polona Herzog, who's a veteran who's been on tour for a long time, she's going to have to make sure if she doesn't come out the way that she wants to, that she's got that backup plan and she's been working with Juan Tadero who's been her coach now for the last few months she's been through a lot of coaches in the last couple of years but Maddie Key is once she gets rolling she's definitely a dangerous foe oh, amazing stuff now you mentioned about Coco and Venus earlier in our conversation yeah we managed to get their thoughts about their first round encounter mm. take a look I'm super shocked. Um, I literally got my dream draw. I definitely get compared to Venus a lot. Our body shape is kind of the same. We're both tall, but when I'm on the court, I just feel like me. Yeah, she played so well. Even all the shank balls went in. So um, I actually didn't play well. So it was a contrast of, of both sides. She is known for coming up big in the moments, and I, a couple times I was like kind of, I guess, hitting it a little bit slower because I was a little bit nervous and I didn't want to miss. And then she was just hitting winners, so I was just like, I gotta hit, <laughs> I gotta hit my serve. I, it's either now or, or never. Yeah, just well done and good luck, you know. I mean, the sky's the limit. Really, I'm, I'm, I'm really happy to see her playing great. It was just so much drama going on. I was just overwhelmed at the end. Um, never played on the court that big and. The, was really wild so I was just really surprised how many people came out to support me. She put the ball in the court which was much better than I did and um, served well, moved well. It was, it was a great match for me. I think she's, she said congratulations and good luck and that she was super proud of me. Um, she's been an inspiration for many people and I was just, just really telling her thank you. 
an awesome shot right at the end there. You can see as the two of them embrace over the, over the net, Coco saying, thank you so much for everything. Oh I, mean, I was getting really emotional. Yeah, like, we were wiping each other's tears <laughs> yeah. away as that was wrong. I mean, really, it's, it's so special. And I loved that Coco took the time and she really took that moment for herself mm -hmm. to say that to Venus. Yeah. And it really does mean, you think about these people as humans. Yeah. That's a big moment for her. And that Venus then met her at that moment, even though Venus had just lost a disappointing match, which I think everyone expected her to win. That was a really, really cool moment, not only for the two of them, but for all of us watching. Mm. And also, it still shows how important role models are. We always have that yeah. discussion about, and there's a 15 year old girl who actually worships Venus Williams and thanks her role model for doing what Venus has done over the last few years. I thought it's, that was brilliant. It's beautiful. You're making me emotional right now, but <laughs> I, also her dad, Corey Goff, her coach, has said he looked at all these young players. You look at Hengis and Capriati and Becker and all the players that came up in their teens and he said I, I've looked at and studied what they've done and I've tried to help Coco it, learning from their experiences. Mm. Yeah. And she's not the only teenager in, in action today. We've got uh, Felix Wojciech Ali Asim in the men's draw. We've also got uh, Diana Stremska and uh, Anastasia Potapova all in action. It's 15 years since we've seen a teenager win here at Wimbledon. Why do you think it is so difficult for these young players to, to, to really make their mark? Yeah, the game has become much more physical, tennis, especially on the men's side. Uh, that 15 years actually is Maria Sharapova, mm. which is insane. She won here in 2004 as a 17-year-old. Um, you know, and I also think the, the mental effort, every, think of it, every single ball, every single physical point that you have to work through, you have to be so focused. And that's why we all talk about today, Rybarakova is going to be so tough for Coco Goff because she's going to ask her that question. Every point from ready play, mm -hmm. you have to play your best tennis. And I just think, you know, back in the 80s and 90s and even before that, of course, you had Tracy Austin and Pam Shriver and these young players coming up. Um, tennis was a different sport in a sense and, and now there's so much put into it there's there's a science to it there's a business mm. to it and that's tougher for a teenager and also on the women's side you've got some age limitation rules because yeah. they they want the players to develop more before they're 18 I was going to ask you about that because yeah, the yeah. rules have changed mm. since a certain Jennifer Capriati shall we say mm. <laughs> yep exactly yeah absolutely which I think is a good thing and it was the right thing to do yeah so you, I mean it's actually been a big point of discussion because of Coco Goff she only can play six tournaments now now, I think it's a, a, through the end of the year or maybe early through next year on the WTA. She can still play lower level tournaments, but that's meant to not burn them out. You had Capriotti who had such great success at 13, 14, 15, and then by 19 was lost as a human once again. But um, it's great when we have these teenage stories. And look at Felix. I mean, Yastremska, Potapova, they're great stories too. But Felix at 18, he's a young guy. He's played some great tennis. And he's been able to learn from Denis Shapovalov, his friend, but also a man mentor to him as to how he should handle himself on the tour. Absolutely. Well, you brought him up. Let's go straight onto the, onto the men's side today. Felix is in action uh, again against uh, Corinthian Mute. This is, uh, should we expect some more fireworks perhaps from, uh, from Felix today? He looked yeah, rather good, I thought, in round one. No, he looked great and it's a huge opportunity. He beat Pospisil in the first round, but Mute actually took out Grigor Dimitrov. He was down two sets to love and then comes back and wins. That was a wins. shock. It was a huge shock. Uh, Dimitrov just hasn't had yeah. his tennis. He had Andre Agassi courtside. That didn't help. Um, listen, I think actually for Felix today, I think this should be a match that's third on the number three court. This should be a match that he's favored to win. And that's another challenge of being yeah. a teenager is he's now the seeded player at 19. Moutet is a young Frenchman who's been a top junior player. So now how does Felix handle those expectations of being the seeded player? I think that would be one he's favored in, but also the expectation is tough too. I'm Different really looking set. forward to um, number one court because you've got Feliciana Lopez versus Karen Kashinov, who both like five sets. And we know that Lopez can go for hours and hours after his exploits at Queens. What's your thoughts around that match? I thought you were going to say you're looking forward to it because it's probably the best looking second round well, match. I I'll say I that. Don't go <laughs> you can say that. I don't want to go down that road. Felly against Karen Hatchinoff, <laughs> yeah. who is uh, often uh, mistaken for a Hemsworth brother. I'm not sure which. I don't know <laughs> the Hemsworth that well. But 2-0, um, actually, the head-to-head -head for Hatchinoff. They last played in Indian Wells uh, just this year. He won in three sets. But you guys, Feli Lopez, he loves the grass. He's 37. He won Queens, not only in the singles, mm. but also 
successful in the doubles Amazing. with Andy Murray. Yeah. And I think it's going to be a tough test. I think we could have. You think it's going to go five? I think it's going to go five. Listen, I'm feeling confident after Sam Quarry knocked out Dominic team yesterday. I called that You're one. You're on so fire. I'm calling. I'm going to say it's going to go to five sets that one. Okay. I, I would actually tend to agree with you. And I think this match deserves five sets because you've got Lopez who plays that grass court game. He's a veteran. He's a lefty. He's got a big serve. And Hatchinoff is this big six foot six Russian guy who just bashes the ball. I think we could be in for a really cracking match. Yeah. Hey, if we get five sets, I think everyone will be happy. Five sets worth of Feliciano's with beautiful eyes. That'll do it for anybody. <laughs> totally. I think yes, exactly. If you want to see Judy Murray, I imagine that's where she'll yeah. be today. She'll be there. She loves Camp Feliciano. Down the number one um, court. Again, we've got, some, we've got plenty more British uh, interests as well. Uh, we've got Kyle Edmund back in action against Fernando Vadasco, who has plenty of Wimbledon form. That's just mm -hmm. not easy. Yeah, no, it's not easy whatsoever. Uh, you know, for Kyle Edmund, I, I didn't even throw up the chalkboard. Oh, that, that was that was the hatching off today. Lopez. I, I'm late there. Once again, <laughs> an unforced error for me on the chalkboard. <laughs> um, but for Kyle Edmund, I mean, listen, two matches in a row on center court. Um, and against Verdasco, you look at Lopez, he's a veteran. Uh, you look at Verdasco, he's a veteran too. These guys are playing with experience. Here's another ask for Kyle Edmund. I would actually say on grass, on form, that Kyle's the favorite here. But Verdasco is a tough customer, mm. yeah. another lefty who just hits a really big ball. What Kyle has to do is he's got to use his own uh, great forehand and backhand and pick on that backhand of Verdasco. That's the shot for Verdasco that just doesn't really push through the court the way that he wants it to. Yeah. yeah. Now, I had a little bit of a shock watch this morning. The one that I put a ring round was Riley Apelka, yeah. who is, uh, was the junior champion here, 2015. Uh, yeah, so I, uh, <laughs> the reason is I bumped Riley. into him uh, on Friday or Saturday, I think it was, over the practice course. Okay. And yeah, it was just after I'd seen John Isner, who I thought is enormous. Riley Apelka is somehow even bigger. He's enormous. He's what, set, like seven really foot seven tall? Foot, almost, yeah. almost, yeah, six But he's 11. up against Stan Wawrinka today. Yeah. Uh, can you see perhaps this might be another seed falling by the wayside? Yeah, maybe. I mean, listen, I actually, we spoke to Riley yesterday on the Wimbledon channel and um, super relaxed, got his first ever Wimbledon win. Win, and he had 17 aces in that first round match that he won um, against Stebe, the German. But um, he's also worked a lot on his net game, a lot on his ground game, on being defensive, on being aggressive. And so I think for him, um, against Stan Wawrinka, they've never played Danny. So I think that's maybe advantage Opelka because he's going to know so much mm. about Stan, who's a three-time major champion. And I think, yeah, maybe a little upset watch on that one. But isn't the pressure going to be on Stan? Because this is the one place he hasn't won a title, isn't it, for him? He's not, not really gone too deep yeah yeah grass. fair enough yeah I, I yes and no because Stan's still coming back from that knee surgery yeah. the French Open the clay season was the first time we really started in tennis terms talking about Stan as a really lethal threat again in the men's game and you're right that he hasn't performed necessarily the best here I think Stan's looking to build his tournament match by match so I actually put them on court and just say ready play guys let's do it and let's see sort of how Stan's able to handle that booming you know astronaut serve that <laughs> <laughs> rocket of a serve that Riley Opelka has but also I think yeah a little bit of that pressure on Stan's shoulders for actually, sure. Now I have a question for you sir. Yes. Have you been down to the southern village yet? I actually not this year. I have not been there yet. Oh well somebody who has and is Annette Kontovic and we asked her to pop down there and give us her thoughts. Hi I'm Annette Kontovic. I'm here at the All England Club. Let's go have a look at the grounds. I love this place because it's so traditional, the flowers are so pretty, the grass is so green has a really nice vibe to it. We're gonna go see one of the courts. It's much bigger this year. 680 more people can have a sit on this court. This is a southern village. It's brand new for 2019. It's well worth checking out. Sustainability is really important for us. Let's go inside and check it out. All the bottles we're using at the championships this year are 100% recyclable and there are loads of recycling bins you can use around the courts. This is the new shop at the Southern Village. It sells anything from hats to t-shirts, so let's go check it out. I know what I'm going to get, I just need to get my initials on it. Food and drinks is such an important part of the day. But the biggest question is, do you have your strawberries with cream or plain? 
So as Annette mentioned there, the Southern Village is something new here at Wimbledon. So if you get the opportunity, go and have a visit. I haven't been down there myself, nor have you, I don't think. No, I had a little look around yesterday. Okay. Uh, no, two days ago, sorry. Uh, what it's do around, you think? It was really, really cool. So it's part of the, um, the, the big drive to, to be more sustainable at Wimbledon because big events like this are very difficult to, without creating a lot of uh, rubbish and, and all sorts of things like that. But Absolutely. there's some really big steps being made here. It's, it's noticeable, even if you maybe don't know what they're doing. There's so many uh, recycling bins around and I don't think there's been any plastic bottles or plastic cups or anything um, left on a hill or anything like that. It's, it's a really, really cool operation. Absolutely, yeah. and as Danny's mentioned, Wimbledon's really keen to reduce its environmental impact at this year's event. So what they've done, they've increased the number of recycling bins around the tournament. Also, you were talking about tucking into your strawberries earlier. Yeah. The punnets that the strawberries come in are made of 70% plastic, which Indeed. I think is absolutely fantastic. But the big news I think is about the plastic that's wrapped around the players rackets this year What's yeah so that? we're not going to see much more of that because uh, because in sustainability um, in sustainability drive mm. binning those uh, the plastic bottles as well yeah. that you get on site they're all uh, recyclable and made of recycled plastic and yeah it's, it, like I say you can see it as you walk around if you are coming down uh, during the fortnight yeah, you're never more than about, what, 10 feet away from a recycle bin? It's cool. Absolutely. And, the, you know, Wimbledon are really keen that the public do their part as well. So if you have rubbish that you see the recycling bins, please do use them. Use refillable mm. bottles and enjoy yes. the strawberries that are created using uh, of cups that are made up of 70% plastic. Indeed. Let's save the planet yes. together. <laughs> anyway, now, so as we teased earlier on, Amory was very, very busy yesterday because she was out asking members of the public what their favourite parts about Wimbledon really are. Wimbledon is more than just about the tennis, so we took a walk around the grounds to find out what makes the championship so special to the public. Tell us your name. Hi, I'm Anishka. And? Anissa. Lovely ladies. Now, this is your first time that you've been to Wimbledon. Can you tell us what makes Wimbledon so special for you? It's so quintessentially British. It's the epitome of British summertime and I love that. So what makes Wimbledon special for you? I think it's the atmosphere. Uh, just being here in itself is amazing. And uh, the people as well, getting to know people from all over the world and standing in line as well. You get to know the people in the front and the back and also the pimps. <laughs> We queued up from 6 a.m. this morning. Um, so yeah, it, it, I would say the queue has been the best atmosphere. Met a few people there in the queue. You know, I've lived in Wimbledon most of my life, and this is my first time ever coming to the tennis. So yeah, it's kind of in my backyard, but my first time coming here. We both noticed you because of your fantastic outfits and also the Wimbledon hats as well. Is that also a special part of Wimbledon, the hats, the colours, the purples and the greens? Yes, we came specifically and made a beeline for the Wimbledon shop. We wanted to buy the hats. It was our first our item, first, yeah, first, first thing stop. that we wanted to get to today, to yes. get our hats. I didn't realise how much work they actually put in when you're watching on TV. It's completely different to see it here actually in the flesh and such a lovely atmosphere. Everyone's so friendly and positive and happy to be here, so I'm really happy to be here as well, and I'll definitely be coming back. So maybe it's a yearly thing now for me. I really like seeing all the players and just having that experience to see new things and to learn that. What makes Wimbledon so special to the British public and to the wider public and all? Ooh, um, it's just such an event, and it's, it's um, yeah, there's nothing really like it because um, this is the first year we've ne lived nearby and we were like, yeah, let's get down there and see it. And yeah, and it's like the whole world's watching. It's amazing. Thank you for talking to us and enjoy the afternoon and uh, roll on next year. Roll on 2020 Wimbledon. Next week. We're coming again next week. You can't get rid of us. No. <laughs> We've been joined by Adam Hunt from the Wimbledon Channel. Welcome. Good, Good to morning. see you. Good, Good to morning. see you. Now, I have to ask you, Adam, as a fan, what would be the first thing you do walking through the Wimbledon gates after arrival? Get some strawberries, pims, or something else? Well, as much as I'd like to say I go straight to the pims <laughs> at 7am, that wouldn't be very professional. I'm talking as a fan. Yeah. Um, Henman Hill for me. I, oh, okay. I quite like the hill. In the morning, before the fans mm. are in here, right. it's nice and quiet and peaceful. 
Um, sometimes you see Carol Kirkwood doing the, the BBC yeah. weather. They yeah. often do that out either, either there or inside Centre Court if it's a mm-hmm. sunny day. Um, and I, I like just sitting there. It's, it's a moment of zen. Mm. And do your prep as well, of course. Yeah, it's a, good, it's a yeah. good spot because, you know, now when people are allowed in the grounds, it's much, much busier, you know, later on in the day you can standing room only but um early earlier on in the day it's nice and quiet there indeed well that's exactly the question we're asking you guys on our poll i can reveal should we drum roll du, du, du. Okay. Du, du, yeah there. Uh, so <laughs> strawberries is one 35 percent of you saying the first thing you go for is the strawberries i can get on board with that i was saying i had my first lot yesterday health they conscious were, exactly one of your five a probably day. probably not with as much cream as i put on <laughs> That's no. very much I not healthy. Any yet, by the you way. get up to one of your five a day, and then all the cream brings <laughs> you down to zero. I'll be honest. If you saw the amount I had on my, I'm probably in negative numbers already. Um, anyway, Adam, so you are here to, to take us across a bit of social, social. media, yeah. uh, which is quite your your wheelhouse this week. Uh, the join the story Facebook group has been awash with awesome stories, um, including one from Laura, Lisa, and Cara, who nine years ago got in the queue. And, well, what happened next? It started a very special journey in their lives. And it ended up with a, with a marriage. Another one. We're two Another days in marriage. Two marriages. I know, we're just chalking them up, yeah. aren't we? Um, but that's, that's the thing with, with Wimbledon and the queue. And, and then when you get in, and I've experienced this in the past, there's a bit of camaraderie in the crew, in the queue. You, you know, you, you've got your neighbours. If, even if you camp, you... you get talking to the people next next to you and who are in it together and then you get inside the grounds and you think oh it'd be nice to spend the day with all of us together and it ended up with them getting married yeah i mean that's oh, exactly what what they did so, so lisa and cara and the friend laura who, yeah. who shared the story they got in the queue they're at eight thousand, which i think is where i was when i came a couple of years ago queue for seven and a half hours so to spend that time got talking to some of the people either side they ended up meeting two lovely people mm-hmm. who they got on we spent the rest of the day with them and then um, yeah two of them ended up getting married all this time later it's Amazing. absolutely awesome Amazing. I mean yeah those are sort Love of is stories. always in the air exactly. at SW19 <laughs> so there you are any, any singletons out there who want to find the one get down the queue it appears to be the place to be that's two marriages in three days we've managed and what I particularly love about the picture mm. when we were able to see it is that everyone's all standing all together and the fact that this is the fateful day they finally got into the grounds it says I'm in the black and white dress and then she talks about her husband who's underneath the clock her future husband fantastic yeah. wonderful stuff that's Kevin, great. Well it's a great story congratulations great story. to Kevin for, for finding his wife um, yeah some more stuff on the um, on the join the story uh, page this one from Alex Singer um, so well he went Wimbledon last year always had a dream to watch Roger Federer yeah. absolutely and that, he talks about seeing Roger Federer but also managing to get his autograph and it, it can be quite difficult for, for fans who haven't been to this might be the, the first tennis tournament they've ever been to in their lives and they think that the players are just mingling around signing autographs all the time and it can be quite difficult to, to grab a an autograph from a player so he was very persistent and he managed to get his man persistence always comes and a little the tip the best here we go here we go more this tips is all the inside you listen, up. Give it listen away. up they do have an autograph hut so sometimes the players do you do scheduled sessions there but also where the entrance to the locker room is that's that tends to be a good spot to get that's an autograph there, there you go. got to go that way to get you heard it here yeah. first that's the big tip of the day if you if want you to get an autograph also is a lovely bridge just above there where they walk from where they get their food where the player restaurant is mm-hmm. across to the locker room oh. and if you want to do some player spotting they're quite that's high the place. up but you can see it <laughs> Absolutely. you can stand beneath the bridge and you you might see Roger Federer or Rafa Nadal you know wandering Indeed. over from having their dinner so if you're in the queue there you go tip number one of the day now speaking of uh, Mr Nadal I mentioned earlier I, was, I had a, a lovely vantage point watching Roger Federer come out onto court I was also there while Rafael Nadal was uh, preparing to come out onto court, uh, number one court um, and lots of people spotted this on social media lots of gifts flying around as they was paired up just about to come across he usually does his little jumps remember last time he was on, uh, well, last time he was on court number one did that bashed his head yeah. so he fiddled with his bags looked up thought about jumping had a little quick check of exactly where the roof was I, I like how he was a little bit hunched down because <laughs> yeah. he's just so worried well, now just about banging his head indeed to be fair. Well, that video I mean went absolutely yeah. viral it, it th- that was a classic example of a sort of tennis video that then went you know all over the place it was on pretty much every sports highlight show or comedy show you could find Rafa Nadal <laughs> yeah. rather vigorously bumping his head it didn't affect his performance though no. he did win that day he did um, absolutely slight headache but I'm sure he got through <laughs> it do you know what there's, there's still a dent 
in the in the lintel of the, of the door. There's still a big dent where his head was. Yeah, there. Oh there's a little plaque there now. <laughs> yeah, it's Rafa. Bashed his head <laughs> right here. Oh, but you know what? Me. He won't make that mistake again. No, he, he will not he make that mistake he again. Didn't. So he, he was playing Yuichi Sugita yesterday. It was a good match. Mm. Sugita started started quite well. He got a break early on. Um, but yeah, he, he was able to do it without the headache. <laughs> <laughs> we so mentioned bonus. earlier that the Duke, uh, Duchess of Cambridge came down yes. yesterday, which mm. was very exciting. And she sat with Katie Bolter and Anne Kiothathorn on Court 14 yeah. to watch Harriet Dark play her match. And Katie's been tweeting about it as Indeed. well. Yeah, and we had we actually had Anne. She's often a guest on the Wimbledon channel. So I spoke to her yesterday, a little, little bit later on in the afternoon. What was it like? Because, and she was saying for for the Duchess of Cambridge, it was it was a great opportunity for her to actually go onto an outside court because we associate, mm. you know, we often see her in the raw box. I remember a couple of years ago, she went through the you know the players' lawn area, uh, but this was out on an outside court. There were a lot more photographers than I think <laughs> would usually be on court 14. They were there, um, and a lot more security yes, as well, which was course. which was good to see. But uh, Anne was just saying, what a what a special day! And she really is a good ambassador for tennis. She comes to Wimbledon every year. She really likes tennis. She was talking about George. Apparently, they were having a little conversation. That, and George's favourite player is Roger Federer, and he's actually got to play with him. So I mean, that's <laughs> not bad. George. I was going to say, how long would you reckon before we see him walking out on on <laughs> centre? The, 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 the whole family loves tennis, and, mm. and George is apparently quite a good player. So. Indeed. Um, I have to say, one of the best pictures I thought of the day was, um, was tweeted out by Frederick Sprenger, uh, who managed to, uh, to get Julia Gerges, uh, the, basically the, the match-winning moment, which is extraordinary yeah. photography. I mean, Frederick, if you fancy a job, I mean, I'm sure we could swing something for you, because it's a, it's a fantastic photograph. And the thing is, as well, you get some great shots on the outside course because, you know, we're used to seeing centre court and court number one, the photographers are all down in that pit you know, beneath the level of the court and all of the photos that come from there. But the thing is, the grounds are so beautiful, mm. you know, the matches that are going on, some of the slightly more lesser known um, viewpoints of the championships, it's good to, good to see them. I mean, I'm not going to lie, it's, it's quite difficult still. You see, if you follow me on Instagram, you'll know it's not, not easy no, to get no, shots like easy. that. So Frederick's done very, very well for easy. himself, I have to say. <laughs> Thanks to everybody for showing your photos in the Facebook Indeed, group yeah. about Join the Story. And keep sending them in as well because we'll get them out on the show. Indeed. Now you're off to the Wimbledon Channel again. Busy yep. day in progress. It is a busy day. Doubles. Doubles in today. We mm -hmm. haven't got Andy Murray. The, the big news of yep. course last yeah. night when it broke. Almost as big as, as, as obviously the uh, semi-final of the World Cup. Yeah, let's not talk um, about that. We're, we're, we avoided it with Nick, did you notice? We didn't point. mention it while Nick was on set, <laughs> yes. which is really well. But he's a happy boy this morning. Yeah. But Serena Williams playing with Andy Murray in the mm -hmm. mixed doubles. They're not playing today, but yeah. I think they'll be on the schedule tomorrow, so that's plenty to look forward to. Brilliant stuff. Indeed, and we'll find out who they play a little bit later on today. Um, yeah, Adam, Thank you for enjoy your, your day. Good to you. see you. We'll see you tomorrow. Yes, no doubt. same time, same place. <laughs> exactly. Now, I'll tell you what, tomorrow, make sure you do join us because we have a very, very special guest none other than well probably the biggest celebrity at Wimbledon Rufus the Hawk we're going to meet